the immune function is impacted by overnutrition and undernutrition. So if you're not eating enough or you're eating too much, this is going to send your immune system awry. And I should context that by saying if you're doing that consistently. And then we have this field of research coming out about fasting and immune function. And I remember being at conferences decades ago and they were talking about fasting and how it would regenerate um, all sorts of parts of the body. It was kind of mind blowing. And now we kind of see it more in the mainstream and we have all these kind of forms of different diets. Um, And this again is causing metabolic switches in the body that then when you go on to refeed after someone has had a period without food, you get increase in in growth hormone, you get production of fresh new immune cells from the bone marrow um, and the stress of the lack of eating kind of causes some of the older immune cells and ones that might be more likely to malfunction to be deleted. So you're kind of replenishing your immune system. And we start to see in experimental models of autoimmune disease that this is, you know, highly therapeutic. Yeah, it's fascinating that it's not necessarily just what we're eating. Mm-hmm. It's you know how much or how little it's, are we fasting? Are we not fasting? Mm-hmm. All these kind of different components that yeah. all play, I guess they all play a role in the signals the body is receiving. Because I guess that's all it is, isn't it? The immune mm-hmm. system is trying to interpret the signals yeah. and sort of going, okay, what does that mean? Is it is yeah. it sort of safe or is it unsafe? Do I need to take action Yes. or can I just stay calm? Exactly. And I, I guess everything we do, even our thoughts, our mm-hmm. words, our sleep, our stress, mm-hmm. They're all giving a signal in some ways yeah. to our immune system. Exactly. Is do I need to respond or is it okay? Exactly. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's always cool. it's, yeah. cool. it's that simple, isn't it? Yeah. At its core. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's this decision making that's ongoing and constant. And it's integrating all these different inputs to decide. And I think the thing with the, the sort of so-called Western diets that that you know we talk about as being having a negative impact on our health. Um, it's just it's just really tasty and we just want to eat it all the time it's salty it's sweet it's delicious it's everywhere we can quickly override any lack of hunger cues just to to, to eat we kind of pathologize being hungry it's like you're not ever allowed to be hungry you have to have 10 snacks in your bag in case you might not be able to reach some food and and then we have millions of incidences of eating across a huge portion of our waking time. And part of the research I was involved in several years ago was looking at postprandial inflammation. So when we eat, there's an inflammation, a subtle inflammation that happens in the body. And this is quite normal. We have plenty of checks and balances in place to keep that in check. And actually dietary fiber is one of the best ways to kind of seal that up again and prevent that from happening, as is having a period of Um, time without food in between meals so eating enough and the right things at one meal that you do not need to eat then till the next meal um, is actually quite good for overall gut health but the whole body health I I, I'm sort of super fascinated by this research as well and you know not only do many of us eat too much we eat too often Mm -hmm. in the day and as you just said there you know that the act of eating is inflammatory yeah. so that's a response to eating is that your body will become inflamed as you say nothing to worry about it's sort of that's part yeah. of the process but i guess you know and you know i know uh sachin panda's done a, a lot of look at this yes. professor panda um and i think when when he started his app in 2015 i think it's called my circadian clock mm-hmm. I, I, I can't remember the figures offhand, but it's something like 20, 30 years ago, most people were eating three times a day in mm-hmm. the US. I think yeah. we can probably infer in the UK as well. And then in 2015, when he was measuring mm-hmm. and people were inputting into the app, I think the top 10% of people were eating 15 times a day. And it was a, yeah. you know, so that if we think about that, let's say, Let's say I'm eating 15 times a day. And let's say, in theory, it is all whole food, right? It's all nice uh, health. Well, what What is considered, yeah. you know, you've got to be careful with the language, but what is considered sort of helpful yeah. foods for our health? You do have to ask the question, is eating them 15 times a day 
helpful. That's that's like 15 bouts of inflammation. Whereas if you had the same sort of food over, you know, it's, it's not a perfect analogy, but three times a day over five days, you're still getting 15 bouts of inflammation, mm -hmm. but that's over the whole week yeah. as opposed to in just one day. And I, I really do think societally, culturally, there's a problem with how much we're being encouraged to eat, even mm -hmm. healthy foods. Like you can buy yes. healthy snacks here and healthy yeah. snacks there, but you're you're sort of inflaming yourself each time. And exactly. I, I don't know, what, what, what would you make of that? Yeah, no, I think that's a real uh, issue. I think it's not well enough understood in the scientific community to really translate into a kind of clear health message for people. But from the research I was involved in and from work like what Sachin Panda has done and others, I definitely think we need to look at the incidence of eating as well as, um, you know, the, the stretch of time that we're eating. I think some of the studies show that we're spending 18 hours a day eating, yeah. which is like the whole time we're awake. Um, and I don't think that we are sort of designed to cope with that on a long-term consistent basis. You know, going back to the traditional diets, I, you know, my grandparents weren't eating all day, every day, um, because it, that just wasn't how it was constructed. And different cultures will eat in different ways, but it's certainly it's not common to eat all the time. And I, I want to use the tradition with the modern life somehow because I think that's the key that we need we can't go back to times gone yeah. by but we can bring bits that we've left behind and kind of integrate it into what we have to work with right now somehow yeah. I mean I, I I find a very effective and powerful recommendation I use in my patients mm -hmm. is uh to try not to eat for 12 hours and every 24 hours. So, uh, you know, basically eating all your food within a 12 hour window, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, really was the norm for pretty much yeah. everyone, maybe 30, 40 years ago. I mean, yeah. you know, we, we might stop eating at 8 PM mm -hmm. and maybe we wouldn't have breakfast till late. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm not talking about an extreme fast. I'm just no. saying, I I think it's quite, I certainly know when I uh, manage to stick to that consistently. Mm -hmm. I sleep better. I feel more energetic. Yeah. And I think there really is this idea that, you know, you need time for the body to regenerate a little bit. You're, mm -hmm. If your gut is constantly having to use up energy to yes. constantly digest food, that's going to impact your immune system. It's going to mm -hmm. impact, you know, the resource it has for something else, right? Yes, exactly. What I think the last few months have highlighted for mm -hmm. us is that looking after your immune system mm -hmm. is really important. Yes. And I would say, I've said it's a lot in the press, like taking care of your immune system is for life. It's not just for, for COVID. You know, suddenly everybody's really interested in it. There's lots of marketing of immune boosting products. You know, all of the supermarkets and, and pharmacies were sold out of vitamin C supplements at the start of the lockdown. Um, but it's something that we should all have been thinking of before COVID because it's, it's, it's for the long game, you know, immunity is really entwined with how we age. So, yeah. you know, if you want to live a long and, and healthy life, we are as a population living much longer than the generations before us, but we're not necessarily living better. So if you want to, you know, I don't necessarily want to live forever, but I want to be able to enjoy my years and feel well and yeah. not be sort of burdened with chronic disease. And we can't bulletproof ourselves, but there's definitely things we can do now that, that are for the long game. If you enjoyed that clip, here's another powerful clip that I think you are really going to enjoy. If you not only produce more immune cells, like there's natural killer cells. They kill, for example, cells that come infected with viruses. This is why physical activity is so good for us. It, it turns on all kinds of good processes in our body that keep us from aging and keep us from getting sick.